So now welcome to Stone Town and uh, we start with this area of the former slave market and this is the place where the slaves were sold in the 18th century and before the market was an open space except a small hut can be seen and after the market closed the site was built, that church, it's an uh, Ankan church. So the Ankan church was built on the top of the historical uh, area. So in this area we visit into four different areas. First we start with the uh, Ankan church where the original market once was and after that we go over there, this is a slave monument. And after that, we go down to that building. There's a slave chamber. It's a place where the slaves have been kept in before being taken to auction. And then we finish in the slave exhibition. So you are most welcome. Yes, sir, brother. Yes. The great debaters get ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. This is, this is always controversial. <laughs> always. <laughs> She just only wants you to trip. So yes, family, we're starting off the tour at the church. Yes, so you know, we got a so family. Look at the uh, architectural layout of this is just incredible. Yeah. Yes, family, church is in session. So now I come to this uh, Anka Church, and this is the Anka Church of a Christ, where it was built soon after the abolition of the slave trade in Zanzibar in 1873. As I told you before, before the market was an open space, was an open space except a small hut can be seen, and after the market closed, the site was built this church. And uh, also this church was built under the personal supervision of uh, Bishop Eros here, when he was an Englishman, and also by that time he was a bishop of Zanzibar from 1872 to 1882. And uh, if you can see this Anka church, has got I mean, Oman Arab architecture. And this because uh, the church was built during the regime of the Fari Sultan, Sultan Said Barash. But also ahead on, of you, you can see those uh, stained glass windows. Also was presented here just as a memory of uh, Dr. Livingstone and others explorers. So you know that uh, Dr. Livingstone was a great explorer and also he was a friend of the slaves and wanted to make sure that uh, the slave trade abolished before he died. But he died the same year after the abolition of the slave trade in Zanzibar in 1873. But Dr. Livingstone, he died in Africa, in Zambia, by malaria. And before he died, he said to the people, when he died, his heart must be buried in Africa. And this is because Dr. Livingstone, he loved Africa very much. And that's why he said, when he died, his heart must be buried in Africa. So after he died, people, they cut his body and took out his heart, where his heart was buried in the northern Rhodesia at Chitambo village in Zambia. So after his heart buried there, people planted a tree on his grave, and after the tree grows, they cut a branch and made a cross. So that cross was presented here in this Anka church as a memory of Dr. Livingstone. And that's a crucifix, a cross taken of wood, under which Dr. Livingstone had buried on his death in 1873. It has been taken from uh, Zambia to Zanzibar. Dr. Livingstone was white? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what happened to his body after his heart buried there? There are two African guys, Susi and Chuma. They used to work with Dr. Livingstone on his exploration all around Africa. So after he died, they carried his body to Bagamoyo in Tanzania, where in Tanzania his body has been kept there for three months. And after three months, again, his body has been dropped to Zanzibar in the British consulate, British ambassador, for more three days. And after three days, uh, his body has been transferred straight to England and buried in Westminster Church Abbey. So his heart was buried in Africa and his body in England. And uh, actually here in Zanzibar, we didn't have a slave, but all slaves were coming from different parts of Africa and then were brought to Zanzibar. And this because since 18th century, most of the African countries has a land lock, no sea, no harbor. So in Zanzibar, since 18th century, we had a harbor here, and that's why all slaves were brought to Zanzibar, just on the road. 
So most of them on the road to Zanzibar, some of them have died due to I mean, hungry, thirsty, disease, and so on and so forth. And always after I arrived here in Zanzibar, they were kept in the chambers for three days. So those uh, slaves in those chambers, some of them have died due to starvation and suffocation and also disease. And after three days, all slaves has been taken out and then were brought by that altar. Originally, there was a tree, I mean, weeping post, where all slaves were brought to that area to the punishment to see how strong they were. It means the stronger the slave, the higher the price. And if they are weak or cry, the price will come down because they used to be whipped. And uh, those who are weak, after punishment, they had to be taken back to the chambers until another auction. So it was very, very, very terrible. And uh, after the punishment, all slave has to stand on that table under that pillar. But that table is not original. During the reconstruction of this anchor church, Bishop Ed was there, where he was an engineer of this anchor church. He put that table to show where the old table once was, once was at this old slave market. The old slave was sent by there for sold by auction. And uh, after the auction, all slaves from Zanzibar, all slaves were sent to England, especially in Liverpool by that time, because there was a big uh, market of the slave, and uh, they were sent there, and also they were sold in that area. And uh, those from West Africa, uh, they used to go straight to the States, and then they used to work in the sugarcane plantation, cotton plantation, and some they were used as the domestic colors. So here in Zanzibar, after the abolition of the slave trade here in Zanzibar, still, there was a man who, died, who did that business illegally, and he took the slave and put them in the north of Zanzibar, a place called Mangapani. So that man, he was a tip -tip. Original name was uh, Ahmed bin Mohammed El Marjab. Simple, he was well known as a tip, tip So after he died, he was just buried here in Zanzibar, and he died in 1905, natural here. But uh, also over there, you can see those uh, uh, 15 organs. Uh, those were brought to Zanzibar since 1880 from England. And since still works here, when you come here during Sunday, you see people play that piano. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 1880. Uh, 1880. But over here, you can see these two pictures. So the first picture on the left here indicates a grave of Bishop Eros there. Bishop Edelstein, who was one who was uh, an engineer of the Sanka Church, and after he died, he was just buried just behind that altar. Yeah, yeah. He was just buried there, just behind that altar, just for his memor memorable. And uh, the next picture on the right is a sign of weeping post. It's a place where the tree once was. So the tree was just in front of that altar. Yeah, yeah. So this is how it was. And also you can find uh, there's a beautiful uh, uh, brass copper yeah, yeah. ahead of there. Long time ago we used to go all, all around the church, but nowadays the missionary has still here, and uh, they don't want anyone to come and walk around here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this church is uh, still in use. Every time you come here, you can find a lot of service. And they have a two session, early in the morning until 9 o'clock, and uh, from 9 to 12 noon. Uh, and uh, in Stone Town, we have uh, two old churches, Anglican and uh, Catholic church. So the Catholic, you can see on the other, you can see that on the other side of uh, Stone Town. But uh, on the way back from, on the, on the way out, I'll show how this church looks like, because uh, always, we have something which is uh, very, very important to our home. How? When you get out, you can see Anglican Church, behind is a mosque, which is quite close, which is unusually around the world. But people live happily and help each other. And that's our uh, Zanzibar religious tolerance. We have two places in Stone Town, and uh, once we get out there, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. So, Glenn. Service sometimes Anglican and then other times the Catholic. Yes. Well, the Anglican Church came out of the Catholic Church. The no, church no, no. Anglican, they are Anglican, and the uh, Catholic, they are uh, Right, but Church of England. Yeah, yeah. Anglican Church. Yes. And at one time it came out of the Catholic Church. Yeah. Because Henry VIII wanted to have more than one wife. And the Catholic Church said no, but that's why they came up with this one. <laughs> so it was Joshua's Church. Yeah. yeah. That's his. Okay. All right. The, the, <laughs> the, the great debaters, the great debaters <laughs> family. So feel free for the photograph when I look around. Oh, uh, you'll take a nice photograph right here. You want a white guy.